Hello, good evening, everybody, and a good evening, the world at large. We are back again. My name is Bismarck Opokunyako, and I'm going to be taking you through separation of messages today. Now, like I always say, it's going to be very interesting. So say glue to your seat, and you're going to love it. The topic for today is separation of messages. What we learned last week is messages, and then we delve into solute, solvent, and then the other ones. Today is going to be a different ball game altogether. So just get glued. Now let's try to look at our, at our objectives. By the end of the lesson, the people will be able to one, explain the concept of separation of messages. Two, list nine methods of separating messages. And last but not the least is explain each method of separating messages with diagrams. Actually, there are more other ways of separating messages by per our junior high school syllabus. We're gonna go for only nine. Now, let's try to find out what is separation of mixtures itself. This involves the separation of individual components that form the mixture. So it means that you have a mixture, you have a solute in there, you have a solvent in there. So whenever you talk about separation of mixtures, it's actually talking about how you're going to get a solute different from the solvent or how you're going to get a different component of the solute or the solvent actually by itself. All right. Now, you having this is dependent on physical properties of the component, which includes boiling point or solubility. Now, boiling point here is talking about the rate or the temperature at which a solvent, boiling point is talking about how a solvent will actually boil. Yes, so for example, when you put water on fire, we all believe that water will boil at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Yes, and solubility here is actually talking about how a, so, um, a solute will actually dissolve, either dissolve completely or half dissolve in a solvent. All right, so physical methods are the various methods that are used in separating methods based on their physical properties. So let's try to look at some of these properties of them. Good. So one of the physical properties in separating methods is what is called simple distillation. Simple distillation. There are other types of distillation. But the first one is simple distillation. Now let's see. It is defined as a method of separating two miscible liquids that boil without decomposition and have sufficient difference in their boiling point. The main point here is that the mixtures here are miscible and also there is no decomposition. So it means that when it goes through decomposition, then the whole thing has changed from it becoming a physical change into a physical, um, a chemical change, sorry. So now we are dealing with only physical changes or physical methods. So that is that. And then it can also be defined as a method of separating two miscible liquids by vaporizing one component of the mixture and then condensing the vapor back into pure liquid. Okay, examples of liquids that can be separated using this method is a volatile liquid from a non-volatile liquid. Let's see what a volatile liquid is. A volatile liquid is a liquid that can easily change to gas. And a clear example is when you are trying to take alcohol or ethanol from water. And this is a very clear um, apparatus or this is a very clear diagram for simple distillation. Now, it's here. We see um, a benzene burner. We see a round bottom flask. We see a condenser and the water outlet, water inlet. And then we have our beaker down. So let me try to go or take you through this. Now, inside the round bottom flux, you have your mixture. So whenever the mixture is heated, what happens is that the vapor comes out of it and it goes through that tube, that tube that you have up there. Besides that, you can see that the part, that part of the round bottom flux has been covered so that the vapor will actually go to that thin tube you have there. So when it goes through it, now we have a condenser at the extreme end of it. Now what happens is that there's always water inlet and water outlet. Now, what happens is that because the whole thing is being heated, definitely the vapor that will go up is going to, be, is going to get heated. So it goes through the tube, and then due to the coolness of the water that is being injected there, it cools the whole vapor, and the vapor then condenses, and it comes down as water or pure liquid. So that is exactly what you can see. Now, we have another type of um, distillation that is also called the fractional distillation. This is another type of distillation used to separate mixtures of volatile liquids. You know what volatile liquid is. It is used in separating two or more miscible liquids. That is, it differs in boiling point less than 
25k and the k here is kelvin it's kelvin example is the separation of crude oil into various fractions such as kerosene petrol diesel and then lpg gas if you want to do that if you want to just change the different components of crude oil you must do or you must go to what is called a fractional distillation method before you can get a different component of kerosene petrol and all that the apparatus is simply of simple distillation except that fractional column is fitted between the distillation flux and the condenser this is the method used by Thema oil refinery in separating crude oil into fractions and this is a very clear example of that now per our diagram we see that the whole cylinder or the whole uh, apparatus has been divided into different parts so from the lowest we have lubricating oil paraffin wax and then asphalt that is the way down now for the other side of it you see the oil is heated in a furnace so it needs serious heat application of serious heat to get the whole mixture here get heated or the crude oil heated and then what happens is that each fragment or each fraction of the crude oil gets evaporated as and when it gets to the right temperature so fuel oil will evaporate at 370 degrees celsius diesel will go for 300 degrees celsius kerosene for 200 degrees celsius and then you have petrol 150 degrees celsius and then lastly but not the least is 20 degrees celsius for butane and then propane so per this it is so obvious that 20 percent will just go up first application of heat get to 20, 20 degrees celsius and then butane and propane get evaporated so every channel for petrol kerosene diesel and fuel oil is just closed and then you only trap all the butane and the propane per its diagram or per its outlet into a container when you are done when it goes between 21 degrees celsius 22 then you cover it up then you know that you are now looking for the next fraction of the mixture you do that and then you get a different component of all of that now we go to filtration another third method of separating the mixtures this is another method of separating the mixtures that contain insoluble particles from liquid using a filter paper and a funnel example is a mixture of sand and water whenever sand and water comes together definitely you're not going to have a complete solution i mean it's a solution all right but then it's not going to be so good to the point whereby you have all the solvent all the solute dissolving in the solvent so there will be a bit of insoluble particles of the sand in the water and the right method for this is what is called filtration filtration can also be used to separate two solids where one is soluble in water so you can choose to go for say water and then salt or water and then sugar because sugar or salt will definitely dissolve completely in water and this is a clear diagram or apparatus for um, filtration so here we have our funnel we have our filter paper and then we have our container or our beaker so what happens is that we make a mixture of the sand and the water in a different container and then we pour it through the funnel paper in which we have the filter paper i mean the funnel where we have the filter paper so as it goes through it what happens is that the salt the sand is not actually dissolving completely in the solution so the sand particles will settle on the filter paper and then the solute the solvent part of it will just go slowly through the filter paper and then you have that as filtrate nicely here so what whatever you have on the filter paper is actually called residue and what you have through the filter paper into the beaker is what is called filtrate so we have our filter paper our glass funnel solid residue and then the filtrate now if it, Filtration method is used, one, by water companies in the purification of water for domestic use. Whenever you want to have water, you want to open your taps for water to run through them, remember that the water that you are using at home used to be as dirty as whatever you can think of. And that water has gone through a process, sedimentation, filtration, addition of alarms and all that. And one method of which by you can clear all the debris from the water is by using filtration. Secondly, to produce pure juice from fruit in fruit cannery. 
You can't just get your nice food drinks and then you enjoy at your home without it going through filtration. Definitely, there will be a bit of here and there in there. So it must be filtered to get a pure fruit juice before you can actually enjoy it. Thirdly, is in breweries, it it used in breweries to remove solid particles from beer or other non-alcoholic drinks before bottling. Before you see your bottles of say beer and other drinks being alcoholic or non-alcoholic, it goes through filtration to get whatever you have there out. If you are even trying to get orange juice and then you don't have any other mechanism to, of doing it, when you can just squeeze your orange juice into a container or a cup, definitely there will be a bit of the seeds of the orange in the juice. So you must filter it nicely to get the juice from the seeds. And then in chemical industries, it's also used to precipitate liquid chemicals. So that's also what happens. Now let's go to evaporation. It is a method of separating soluble solid from a liquid by applying heat for the liquid molecules to evaporate. An example is the use of this method to separate salt from water. This is a very clear example that I use in most of my lessons. Now, let's say that you were sent by your mom to buy um, soil. And it's not just in other soil, probably the aggregated ones. And then on the way you were playing, so you fell down, and then the sachet got broken, and then you had your salt in the sand. How are you going to get your salt as neat or as clean as it was purchased or bought? What you have to do is that you go through this method, and then you have it done. Now, we will see about that when we go through it. Now, here, we have our benzene burner. We have our tripod stand, we have our gauze or wire gauze, we have our evaporating basin, we have our solution, and then the vapor. Now, the solution here is a mixture of the salt and then the water. So what you have in there in the evaporating basin is the mixture or the solution of water and then salt, or what I, I, I commonly call, or what is commonly known as brine. Yes, so you put that in there, you apply heat, and I use a wire gauze. Now. What happens is that as the whole water and the salt solution gets boiled, the water turns into vapor, evaporates and vanishes, and then you have your salt as crystal clear in the evaporating basin. Let me go through again. I'm saying that your salt is now dirty, so you can take it through so other, um, other, other, other means. But what you do is that when you get the fine salt and then everything, what you do is that you just pour it into the evaporating basin, you boil it, and when it's boiled for a couple of minutes, the water content of the solution gets evaporated, leaving the salt particles as crystal clear in the evaporating basin. Then we go for sublimation, which is the fourth one. This is a process by which a solid directly changes into gas without passing through the liquid state, whereby a solid goes through the gaseous state without passing through the liquid state. Examples of um, substances that can actually go through this kind of method it's naphthalene ball or what is commonly called camphor and then you have your iodine crystals and then ammonium chloride let's see how this is done here you always need your benzene burner or your heat you have your china dish that's what i have here but in other books you see petri dish petri dish p-e-t-r-i and then dish D-I-S-H. So what you have here is that you can use any other thing, but you are going for ammonium chloride. I told you about naphthalene bulb and also go for other ones. I mean, whenever you are going for this. So you apply the heat. You have the ammonium chloride already in your china dish or your petri dish. When heat is applied to it, remember, the funnel here has been inverted. It's been turned upside down. You see it as a funnel. It's actually a funnel. It's been turned upside down. And what you have on the topmost part of the funnel, it's a cotton plug or cotton wool. Cotton plug or cotton wool. So that the vapor from the ammonium chloride wouldn't go through that hole and then vanish. So it is kept there to keep the vapor in there. So when the whole thing is heated, what happens is that it vaporizes. And then you see the vapor actually clinging or going up and then clinging to the inner walls of the inverted funnel. So you see it here as solid, solidified ammonium chloride. 
and the vapor of ammonium chloride is what you see or per the diagram is what goes or clouds the inner walls of the inverted funnel so you can use iodine you can use ammonium chloride and then the like so that is how that also goes then we go for separating funnel separating funnel this is used to separate two immiscible liquids of which one is denser than the other one of the liquid settles on top of the denser one examples of liquids that go through this method include water and petrol oil and water and then lubricating oil and water let's forget about all these examples let's come to practicality here now you prepared your palm nut soup you are trying to wash the dishes unfortunately you didn't, it didn't come to mind for you to use warm or hot water so use cold water you would see that as soon as the cold water is poured into the container or your, your saucepan or your cooking intensity what happens is that you see that the, the oil comes on top of the water it's giving you a clear indication that water is denser than the oil and like i told you that the two of them are immiscible liquids there's no way the two of them will completely mix up to the point where you wouldn't have any difference between them there was going to be a clear difference between them so the oil will come on top of the water and there's a clear way of separating the oil from the water you use what is called the um, separating funnel now this is how you go through it the whole content of it is poured into a separating funnel a separating funnel has a tap okay so as soon as it goes there you see the water and the oil and then the oil comes on top of the water so you gradually open the tap and then you allow the water to move through slowly from the tap and then when you see that the water is getting out completely you just close the tap and then you get your oil separated from the water so you see that all the water will get come through and get into the stand or what we have on the setup at the lower base and then whatever you have up there will be the oil so per the diagram the oil is what is colored in yellow and the water is what is colored in green or blue so that's what happens so it opens and then it goes through that and then it gets stuck we have what is called chromatography chromatography comes from a latin word chroma which means color which means color and is used to separate mixtures of pigments pigments here is talking about colors like chlorophyll ink or dyes it can also be used to separate solute from solution by using a different rate of movement in a solvent over an absorbent material or paper the common type of chromatography is what is called the paper chromatography let's see how that works this is how paper chromatography works now just pick a filter paper on the filter paper mark it with um, a marker okay you can use a black marker so per mine i use a black marker so just give a black spot on one end of the marker and then you have your setup so you slowly don't do not actually put the whole filter paper into the water so just a tip of the filter paper get it into the water and then you see that per this whole thing you see the different pigments of the ink being separated as per what we have in two or setup two so you see the different colors of the black marker being separated from each other so when you see somebody wearing a nice t-shirt with so many labelings and then so many colors it goes through the same method called chromatography and then it is completely done we know when it's a method of separating two solids from different densities by using the wind the mixture is tossed in the air and the less denser component is carried away by sun or by sorry by wind this is commonly used in our homes let's say i have my maize or i have my corn um, i see a bit of um, um, dirt inside and i want to get it off i put it on a flat container i toss it a bit or i can toss it once i toss it i blow and air through it and you see that all the other particles of the maize or the corn gets carried away by the wind and then i have my corn there and it is commonly done everywhere so per the woman you can see what is happening the woman has some cereals in a basket and then she's trying to get the the husk or other debris from it so from a distance she pours it 
the wind blows the other less denser ones and then the death is off. It is termed as winnowing. Winnowing. We go for the eighth one, which is called precipitation. Precipitation. The addition of chemicals to separate a solute from a solvent in a solution. Addition of chemicals to separate a solute from a solvent in a solution. The solute forms solid, solids. Yeah, that is it. It precipitates from the liquid, which is then filtered. This is used in the treatment of water by the addition of alum. Whenever you have water that is very dirty, just add a bit of alum into it. Leave it for a while. You see that the whole dirty part of it forms a chunk of solid underneath your container. And then you can clearly decant or clearly pour your water out and then you have your dirt left there. So that is, example is clearly what is being shown or is done on your screens. So you have a measuring cylinder and the measuring cylinder contains a solution which is very, very, very dirty. So uh, an, alum, an alum is placed in there. You leave it for a while and then you see the water coming on top of it and then the dirt actually coming underneath the container. As soon as you pick this, you slowly pour the water out of the other mess, which is the dirt, and then you're good to go. We have on the ninth, but not the least, it's called the magnetic separation. This is used in separating the magnetic substance from a non-magnetic substance. Example is iron filings um, separated from sulfur. It is used by tailors and seamstresses in separating pins from sand. How do you expect a seamstress or a tailor to get her pins or his pins from the sand? The best way out is the magnetic separation. A magnet is just held in the hand and then it's just thrown or go into the sand and just, just go anyhow. And then you see that because the pins are magnetic substances, they get attracted onto the magnet. And then you have your pins away from your sand and then you are, you are gone. Secondly, it's also used by scrap dealers to lift scraps of metals or old cars. Whenever there are scraps, it contains, I mean, so, 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 so many things. So a magnet is used. A magnet is just thrown in there. And then with the help of these heavy, heavy duty cars, they help it. It gets there. And then you see that any other metallic substance gets attracted by the magnet. And then it's lifted up. So from metals or old cars. And there's a clear example of it. A bar magnet. Now from the diagram here, you have sulfur in a container, and then you have iron filings in a different container. Pair the one you have down, the iron filings and then the sulfur have been brought together in one container. How did you get the iron filings from your sulfur? Is the use of a magnet. A use of a magnet. You are using a magnet because the, the iron filings are magnetic substance. They will always attract or get attracted onto a magnet. So the magnet is held up, rubbed or taken into the mixture, rubbed in there, and then you get all your iron filings on the magnet. Now, today I have BC questions for us to go through it. And look at these diagrams, separating of mixtures. Now, this is to, uh, BC 2014. It is one of the compulsory questions, 1B. The diagrams below are different laboratory setups used in the separation of mixtures. Study the diagram carefully and answer the question that follow. The first one, actually, in the BEC question, on the BEC paper, they were not asking so much questions like this, but I chose to add a bit more to tease you up to see how well you've actually got a grip of this concept. I, name each of the parts of the apparatus displayed above. So let's go to A. Only A, only A, and let's try to see the various components of it. Let's try to look at the various components of it and then see whether you'll be able to get exactly every um, diagram or every setup or every apparatus being displayed here. I'm giving you a couple of minutes. Just go through and let's see what happens. Okay, 
I hope by now you have your answers. Okay, don't worry, you keep your answers. The right time will come whereby you have to call in and they give me your answers. Okay, so that's the A. And the B2 is another setup. That is also another method of separating the messages. And they have to get, actually get the different, different, different parts or label the different, different parts of it. And last but not the least, it's also another type of it which you have to tell us what it is and then different parts. So pay the question, say I, I. Name the separation method represented by each diagram. So pair A, pair B, and then pair C. I'm supposed to give all of them. What type of separating messages is this? Is it this or is it that? I don't want to give anybody any clue because you get it right, you have a package. Now, I, I, I. Which of the setups is used to obtain clear water from muddy water? Is it A, is it B, or is it C? And then IV. Which of the setups is used to obtain salt from salt solution? We go for a very quick commercial break, and then when we come back, I'll be expecting your answers. Mm-hmm.